Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the fourth video in our batch normalization series. In the last three videos, we discussed about the batch normalization in detail. And we also saw how batch normalization works during the training, how the gradients are getting calculated. We derived the gradients. And we also saw how batch normalization works during testing or inference. Now in this video, we will implement the batch normalization from scratch. I am using PyTorch toolbox to load the model, training loops, evaluation, all of these things. But the batch normalization layer we will implement from scratch by ourselves. Now let us see one by one. First I am starting with the import statements. I am importing all the libraries here. If you see, I am importing the PyTorch NN module for building the neural network, optimizers, functional modules, data loader, uniform distributions, transforms, and datasets. For this project, we'll use MNIST dataset, which is handwritten digits recognition. And then we will train the model without batch normalization. And we will train the model with batch normalization. Okay, we will build a small dummy model with and without batch normalization. We will train the both the models and we will see the difference between the accuracies and how the training actually progresses. And then I'm importing Seaborn for plotting, same Matplotlib for plotting. Here I'm loading the datasets, MNIST dataset. So this dataset is from the Torch Vision datasets. I'm loading the dataset into this folder. And then I'm using the PyTorch data loader for creating this batch size and number of workers, shuffling, all of these things. Okay. So this is loading the dataset and then loading into the data loader. Now let us implement batch normalization from scratch. As you are aware, batch normalization has two trainable parameters which are beta and gamma. And also it has two parameters running mean and running variance. These two are used for inference purposes later. Okay, we will use these two variables for using the batch normalization during inference. So for that I am creating a register buffer for storing these values. And I am initializing with zeros and ones. Okay, done. And these two are my trainable parameters. So that is why I am taking it as nn dot parameter. Okay, gamma and beta. So one is the scaling parameter, one is the shifting parameter. This epsilon is for the divisible by zero error. So to eliminate the divisible by zero error, we are taking the epsilon and the input size and the momentum values I'm taking here. So if you see this, the actual forward pass is the implementation. These are all the variables initialization, which we will use during the training as well as the inference. Now, this is the actual implementation. If you see, I'm taking whatever the input coming to this layer, the batch normalization layer that I'm considering as X. Now I'm checking if it is equal to two because this particular implementation supports only dense layers. Okay. So it should have only two dimensions because one is for batch. Second one is for the values. Now I'm checking if it is training mode or if it is testing mode. Because if it is testing mode, then I need not to calculate this mean and variance, all of these things. And I need not to update this running mean, running variance. If it is only prediction, whatever the running mean and running variance are available in my initialization, these variables I will directly use for doing the normalization here. Whereas if it is training process, then I need to calculate the mean of this values and I need to calculate the variance of the current training set because it will receive in terms of batches during training. And then these two I will use for updating the running mean and running variance. And after that, I will do the normalization here. Okay. So these two are the actual formulas. So what I'm doing is X hat I'm calculating. This is the normalization part where you are taking your X, subtracting with the mean value into one divided by square root of variance plus epsilon. This is to eliminate the divisible by zero error. So otherwise what you are doing essentially is you are taking your original values, subtracting with mean, dividing with standard deviation. So this is your normalization part. And once you normalized, you have to scale that value and also you have to shift it. Those are with the gamma and beta parameters. So the gamma is this one into X hat. So this is your scaling parameter and beta is the shifting parameter. That is why you are adding this. Whatever the result you got here, you are adding this here. And that is the final output. And that output I will send to the next layer. So these two are my actual batch normalization equations. 
and these are the update equations for training and testing part what to use the mean and variance during the training what should we do with these values and during testing what should we do so during training we get a batch of data set so we take the mean of them that will be our mean and variance also you calculate the variance in that batch that is your variance this is during the training process whereas during the testing process you will not have batch so you will use the running mean and running variance as your mean and variance and then during the training you need to update these running mean and running variance as well so that is what we have discussed in the previous lecture so these running mean and running variance these gets updated during the training for every epoch for every iteration and what are the last value we got those values we will use for testing later okay so that means this running mean and variance indicates the mean and variance across the total data set now running mean i am updating based on the momentum so this momentum is used to decide how much of the portion i want to keep from the previous batch and how much of the weightage i should give for the current batch mean because this is running mean right so this is like a sliding window kind of thing so this based on this momentum value this weightage we are giving to the values which we have seen so far and the weightage we are giving for the current mean same thing for the variance momentum into running variance and 1 minus momentum into the current batch variance so that is what we are actually doing it here so this is the implementation of batch normalization in python okay we implemented everything by our own now i am loading this as part of nn module from the pytorch because if i load this as part of this then i can use this layer directly in my neural network definition and the neural network training process gradient calculation everything works just like the same as all the inbuilt layers that is why i am inheriting this particular class from nn module if you see this i am not implementing the backward pass here i only implemented the forward pass because the moment i inherited this based on these equations or computations whatever we are performing here and we mentioned the parameters gamma and beta the backward pass automatically taken care by the pytorch module so it will calculate the gradients according to these equations of course we derived the gradients in the last class but implementing them and all it is a redundant process there is no point in implementing even this implementing from scratch also there is no point but we are doing this to understand the actual computations happening in batch normalization otherwise no one will ask you to implement from scratch all of these things so we are doing this to understand the internal working of batch normalization layer so when you do in deep hands on from your own then only you can understand the concept clearly so that is why we are doing it here so this is the batch normalization implementation and then the remaining part is same i am doing two models here one is the simple net and second one is simple net with batch normalization i am using only two hidden layers and the final layer is the output layer so three linear layers linear means dense layers so this is mnist data set so the input will be flattened and then pass it to this one 28 by 28 784 pixels will come here because that is a image data set and then 64 channels will be there in this particular layer output channels and after that the 64 will become 128 and 128 become 10 because this is having 10 labels 10 classes 0 to 9 so this is my initialization of the network and then this is the forward pass of the network so if you see i am flattening it here and i am passing to this classifier so this classifier is the sequential module from the pytorch so all these things are whatever the layers i am mentioning here linear relu linear relu all these will be arranged in the sequential order automatically connected together that is what a module comes here and whatever the input i am getting in the form of images i am flattening it to get a single 1d vector and passing to this class pair so this is a simple neural network without batch normalization and here i am doing the same thing with batch normalization the same network 64 128 and 10 but i am adding batch normalization layer before relu that's it so if you see these are the two model implementations one with batch normalization and one without batch normalization and we will train both these models in the same data set for the same batches and iterations and then see the difference in the training 
Now I am initializing both the models. So this is the definition. Now I am initializing both the models without batch norm and network with batch norm. Okay. And I am initializing the optimizers and loss functions. So I am using the same loss function for both of them and using the optimizers, initializing the optimizers for both this one with batch normalization, without batch normalization, learning rate is 0.01. So these are the two optimizers for both the networks. Now I am keeping the history of loss values here in the list. These histories we will use to plot the carousel later. I am training for only 10 epochs and then I will show you for both the loss functions how they actually decrease. This is the actual training loop for every epoch I am loading the data set because the whole data set when you are loading you load in batches. So that is this loader will do. We kept the batch size as 512. Batch size as 512 and number of workers 4. Now in this training loop one by one batch will load and the inputs and labels because every batch will have input and ground truth. And then this input will go to your network, neural network, whatever the output you got with that output and your labels you calculate the loss and you back propagate and then optimize the weights. That means update the parameters. That is what it will do. Done. This is for normal model without the batch normalization. Same thing we will do for the model with batch normalization. Okay. If you see the same set of data, I am passing to both the models. That is why I kept this two training processes inside the same batch. Because if you want to compare apple to apple, you have to put the same batches. So that is why I am doing both the trainings inside the same batch for every batch. And then what are the loss I got here for both the functions? I am appending to this particular list I have added here. And then I am calculating the running loss and running loss for batch normalization. This is just for the logging purpose. And after that, once the training is completed, I am actually evaluating it on one some dummy input and getting the activation maps. Okay, so this is just to show you without batch normalization, how the output activations appear and with normalization, how the output appears from the particular layer. That is what we are doing it here. Okay, so if you see this here, right, our classifier zero means the first layer in our classifier, you are passing the inputs and then you got some output A and after that, that output you are actually showing it here. And the second way what you are doing is from the classifier, whatever output you got. So that one you are plotting it here. So both the things are activation functions from the both the classifiers. And later what I'm doing is I'm plotting both the loss functions. So hope you understood the flow. Now let us run all the blocks one by one. Okay. So this we already ran. Now the, our implementation and then our initialization of the models. And after that initialization of the loss function and optimizer and the training loop. Now the training loop will happen one by one. So this is the loss and this is the loss for batch normalization layer. This is the loss for the original model without batch normalization and this is the loss for the model with batch normalization. So if you see the loss has reduced very fast compared to right? You can see the loss is 2.2 in the second epoch. Here it is already 1.3, 2.1, 0.836. So you can see the difference, but we will see in the plot also. So we are training for 10 epochs now. And once the 10 epochs are completed, then the graphs will be plotted. Okay, so now you can see training has completed and you can see the activations here. So this red is the activation map for the model without batch normalization. And when batch normalization is used, you can see it is centered around zero because all the activations you are normalizing. So this is the activations and now you can see the loss. So if you see the red curve without batch normalization, the loss is propagating like this. This is only for 10 epochs, right? And final loss also, it is much higher than your batch normalization loss. And batch normalization loss, you can see very fastly it got reduced. So that is the reason people use batch normalization because it helps in faster training. And it is also actually robust against the weight initializations. If your model has randomly initializing weights, so depending on the weight initializations, your model training process will change here and there, little bit minor. But the model, if you add batch normalization, it will be robust against those weight initializations as well. So hope you understood this implementation. It is very simple. So we implemented the batch normalization function here 
we are actually keeping running mean and running variance as the variables in this one and the parameters are gamma and beta in our layer so these variables we are keeping track so that we can use them during the testing okay that is the only thing so hope you understood this one if you want to implement everything without even using the pytorch everything in using numpy only then i will share that repository in the description below so there is a good repository which has that implementation purely in python without using any of the toolboxes only thing is it will become lengthy so that's why i used pytorch to speed up the things the only thing we are looking for is batch normalization implementation so that i have implemented from scratch whereas the remaining training loop loss calculations all of these things we can use pytorch or tensorflow to fast enough because there is no point in writing our own everything on our own whatever the thing we are learning so that we need to understand so i am implementing that from scratch hope you learned something from this video thank you